Welcome to the internet, my friend. How can I help you? We're online. All, all, all systems go. And in your face. You are listening to the golden microphones of the IMC radio. News, opinions, and your calls. Yes, you are. You gotta see that big picture. Sometimes you know? if you stop the machine, then you realize, whoa, you know, you have to have some foresight to think about what kind of an effect is that gonna have on air travel. How important yeah. is aviation? How important is aviation to you? To the base. Come to the base. Well, welcome back to Sun and Fun 2016. This is Howie, your uh, host from the golden microphones of the IMC Club. And this is uh, Saturday. Is it Saturday? Saturday it is. feels like Sunday. Even, it's, 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 it feels it. like Sunday and the public's here in mass and everybody's here. It's just amazing. The parking lot is full. Uh, the crowds are on fire. People screaming, running around. and oh, It's been horrible. Uh, the weather here is ridiculous. I mean, is this like, like the nicest breeze in the world? I it mean, is. It's almost a little too cold in the shade. <laughs> yeah, it can be a little cool in the shade, but uh, you guys are in flight suits. So, or, I mean, in, in, um, in your uh, Civil Air Patrol uniforms. Let's just start the show by saying welcome to Sun and Fun 2016. Uh, the IMC radio program is all about proficiency, and this is f- hangar flying with a mission. What we do is we will get gather people together and we'll talk about what's going on in real life scenarios. Say you're flying at 15,000 and all of a sudden this happens. What do you do? We all fly different aircraft, different experiences with different uh, equipment in the airplane. What would you do? Would you put just put tape over that breaker? You don't need it. Just put the tape on the breaker. Yeah, and you're going to go, <laughs> and you go, well, I, that's what I did. And you'll talk about it, and that's the nature of that. And today we're having what we call hangar flying with a mission. And um, we're joined today with, uh, I'm going to start right off with these young ladies. I am most impressed when I see kids uh, involved in aviation to any degree. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you that about 10 years ago, one of the first air shows I went to, I looked out and I saw nothing but um, you know, gray-haired older people. And I thought, oh, man, we're finished. What we need are kids. What we need are girls. My daughter, my son, both very smart. My son's an engineer. My daughter had a hard time. And the thing is, what was wonderful is um, I'm seeing now floods of kids. And um, first, and correct me if I get your names wrong, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Veronica Killingsworth. Yes, sir. And then we got Airman Cassie Killingsworth. Yes, sir. Well, it's wonderful. First, I want to ask, uh, Tyler, how's the audio on the input? It good. It's good? Okay, great, great. 15-second delay. 15-second delay? 15-second delay? 15-second delay? 15-second delay? <laughs> delay, 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 delay. Anyway, next to them, we have um, uh, Richard Hogan from Commuter Craft. Uh, hi, Richard. How you doing? Great. Here, shake the hand. Don't be Good. afraid. I won't bite. <laughs> Fantastic. That's wonderful. And you have a really very interesting-looking airplane here, and um, I'm going to ask you to talk about that in a minute. Uh, not uh, not like my Cherokee. No. No one oh, has, has well, used it for a Piper yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, m- maybe um, our representative from Flight Safety will have something to say about Uh-oh. that aircraft. Uh, Herc Strumpf. It's good to see you again, buddy. Nice to see you as well. Nice well, as welcome well. to the show. And you brought your daughter with you? Absolutely. This is Mia. Say hi, Mia. Hi. Mia. <laughs> Mia got a real kitty painted face. Yeah, really. She's big on that today. She's awesome. having a ball. That's wonderful. You know, again, the kids that I see here, one of the things I pointed out this morning, um, I turned to a bunch of people. I said, quick, have a look. Bango. There had to be 30 people under the age of 30. And then we turned around and said, now look over here. Again. 30 under the age of 30. Ladies, why are you doing this? My dad is a mechanic on aircraft at Lockheed Martin, and so I've grown up in the aviation industry. But it's also just, I love flying. I love seeing the diversity in the planes and the people and just all coming together just for the love of something. It's incredible. And as my sister said, we've grown up around aviation. Our father's a mechanic. He's been mechanic on many, many pilots. And I've also grown up with it. And I love flying. I love feeling the exhilaration when you fly. And as my sister, I love seeing the diversity in each plane. Uh, that, that's awesome. Um, why did you decide CAPS? So one of my friends 
was trying to get her pilot's license, and she just Googled the best ways to get a good pilot's <laughs> license, and Civil Air Patrol came up. She's like, hey, let's go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want every, all you old people, I want you to remember what she just said. My son, whenever I ask him a question, you know what his answer is? Google it. Google it. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, of course. And so, of course, you, you found out the way, and now look at you, Lieutenant Colonel. Yes, sir. Oh, I've been oh, in a babe. long time. You've been at it a long time? I've what are you, nine? <laughs> I joined when I was 13, so seven years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, whatever you're eating, keep it up. Thanks. Yeah, darling, you're looking marvelous, <laughs> let me tell you. It's, it's <laughs> so wonderful. And uh, what are your aspirations? What do you intend to do? Um, I'm going to school right now to be a mechatronics engineer. So how it, you know goes into my aviation I don't know yet but I'm working on my pilot's license I'm trying to get a ground school through Civil Air Patrol so we're working on doing it at our group level and so I'm helping break the ground there and then I'm working with a couple pilots in the Civil Air Patrol to get my air time up and they do it at a very discounted cost so it's very affordable and I didn't think it'd be ascertainable without the Civil Air Patrol very well spoken Cassie what's your gig I somehow I plan to be a pilot whether that's commercially or whether pi private, I'm not sure yet. And I'm also probably going to go to school to be an engineer. Again, of what type, I have no idea. You're, you're not sure yet? How old are you? I am 14, sir. You're not supposed to be sure. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Yes, Wonderful. Sir. Well, welcome aboard. We're going to shift gears. Richard Hogan, tell me about this insane, wonderful airplane. Well, the Commuter Craft Innovator is a three surface design and it was a little unique in that we were trying to eliminate the stall spin characteristics that most private aviation aircraft have. What's three surface? Three surface means that we have a primary main wing, we also have a canard and a horizontal stabilizer. So we've got twin boom, it's a pusher prop, two place aircraft. But uh, with the three surfaces we're able to get a little slower uh, both on landing and take off a little sooner than you would with a straight canard. I originally started just with a straight canard. Now we all know the technology service. canard. You know we can all appreciate that, and you know following um, uh, Dick and, and his brother and you know what they did. Um, this is a pipe dream, right? It, it won't fly. There's oh, no way. Well, uh, we're figuring we'll have a thousand hours on it before people stop saying it won't. fly. Oh, you mean this thing already flies? Yes, sir. It's got not a little model that we. No, we did Caution things first. in the side view mirror appear larger than the real. Really? That's correct. It's this not is RC. One, full size. And matter of fact, we've tested it to over 400 uh, pounds over the projected gross weight of the production units. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I mean, it takes, listen, for anybody that's taken something from concept to completion, we'll tell you it's a lion's, uh, a, a yeoman's effort. So congratulations with that. We've had and, a lot um, of people say that I would win an insanity plea hands down just for trying <laughs> to do such well, a thing. Hey, welcome to the club. I mean, there's a lot of people, nuts people here. I mean, we're all nuts. We fly. That at least that's what my wife tells me. Anyway, we're going to move it on over here to Herc. Hey there. It's good to see you again, buddy. Nice to see you as well. Um, Herc, um, with Flight Safety International. Yes, sir. Um, the IMC Club, the mission, the reason why we exist, IMC Club is to keep pilots proficient. The whole idea was introducing uh, instrument-rated pilots to this, and what we're doing is we're taking it to the next level, which is going down in uh, the sophistication. We're now going to create the VMC Club, which is going to allow pilots who fly by visual flight rules to get together and talk about their experiences. Why, when you're going down all of a sudden, full throttle, okay, airspeed's live, air, 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 uh, ah, crap, and uh, push it down, and go, tower, I'm landing it. Should I roll? No, 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 no. Declare an emergency. No, no, no. I just got to take the cover off the pedo tube. Uh, you know, <laughs> that, that's kind of talk because we all do it. We all do it. I've been there, done that. And it's called wisdom. Uh, maybe even called experience. <laughs> <laughs> experience is wisdom lived through. Or lived that's through is experience. You know what that's I true. mean. But I've done it too. I, so, I, you know. It's uh, in, in my world, in my 20 years of flying, I, I, I've made those mistakes. Believe it or not, I've left that pedo tube cover on, uh, <laughs> on, a, on a Cherokee, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, I've also uh, had the door latch with the lower latch. If you know anything about a Cherokee, it's, it's, there's an upper door latch and there's a bottom door latch or a side door latch. I have a Cherokee. And, and, and the same thing happens. If you leave the upper door latch, guess what? It's that the, the top of the aircraft is, is, is a part of the lift of the aircraft, if you will, and it'll it'll discharge that door open. And I've had the same problem where we didn't do the top door latch. Well, guess what? We did the right move, and we aborted the takeoff. 
we noticed it right away. So it happens with everybody. But you know, at, at flight safety, we train pilots to proficiency. We're, we're looking to do things that are that are coming along in corporate aviation, whether it's a Citation Excel all the way up to a Gulfstream, a Sikorsky helicopter all the way into a Piaggio. As a matter of fact, which actually your aircraft sir reminds me of a bit of a Piaggio with the Canard. Of course, it does. We got them the in pusher, my. They're you know? up, yeah, they're they're down on, in, on our airport a lot. Exactly. So you most know, unique sounding aircraft ever. Absolutely, it's the exhaust uh, into the prop blades, and you and you hear. It. It's, yeah. it's, you know, a lot of people say, gee, what was that? And once you hear it once, you know it's Piaggio. It's Don't even have to Kind of like a Cessna 337. Have you heard Piaggio's, you know, the twin pusher prop with the canard, the sexiest plane on the planet? Oh, yeah. Two years ago, I worked Oshkosh, so I was out there flight line marshalling the, for two weeks, and, yeah, you get to see all the planes. Oh, give me some love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Oh, I wish I was a kid. I would do that in a heartbeat. That's I'm going wonderful. back this summer. Oh, well, great. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have our radio program. At, uh, you know, it's an EAA thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And we'll be at the radio station, so I'll expect to be in touch with you guys out at EAA. Well, that's wonderful. So what's new on flight safety? Well, flight safety is doing flight safety thing, and, and things are going well. We're training pilots proficiency. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're devising new ways to do that. But also my, my primary reason to be with you today is I'm the president of the International Stinson Club. We go from the old, we go to the, you know, or from the new to the old, I should say. And with the International Stinson Club, we are looking exactly at what these ladies are doing down here, is getting younger people involved in aviation. I brought along my 10-year-old daughter. She flies with me all the time in the aircraft. As a matter of fact, she claims all the good landings as hers. Uh, they are. My daughter. <laughs> Whenever my daughter's la- uh, with me, we never feel the wheels drop. You bet. You know, she rolls it all. We down already? She, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. But for us, having a, uh, an aircraft that's almost 70 years old, we want to support. We want to take those aircraft and, and continue to nurture them out in the marketplace. We have the Type Club tent that, that Lynn O'Donnell has been manning all week. Uh, as a matter of fact, Lynn's here somewhere. She, she stopped by. So let me ask you, do you have to be an old person to fly an old plane? Gosh, no. Gosh, no. I, you know, for me, I, I was born into this particular aircraft. I was very fortunate to be you born, born into You were born in the aviation. airplane? Not in the airplane, but near it probably. <laughs> <laughs> But at the same yeah, you'll, time, you'll figure that out I grew up with it. I was joking. And with I, I have, for, for, for lack of a better term, I didn't know any better. And I was very fortunate as a kid. And I grew up to finally find that out. So wow. we try to get younger people involved. And I do Young Eagle flights with this particular aircraft. I do media flights with it. Whatever it takes. With the Stinson. With the Stinson. Awesome. Absolutely. How many hours do you have, Lieutenant? Not many because when you do them in a cap plane, probably seven or eight hours. But I'm working on it. I just found out about the EAA Eagle program, so as soon as I get home, I'm going to look into it. Well, please do. Awesome. And by the way, I want to say that Open Airplane was modeled after the CAP system. Open Airplane be able to rent an aircraft from airport to airport because when you guys get checked out, you go to your next mission in the next town, you get in the same airplane, and off you go. How about you, Cassie? I, sir, I have only had at least two. That's just in powered flights. I've had... Uh, two hours, so again, not much, but I'm hoping to get even more in the future. Oh, I'll bet you will. You're in the right place. Uh, don't forget to smile, shake hands, and say, "Can I sit right seat?" And, and you'll you'll get you'll get that a lot. Safety pilots, go ahead, grab the microphone. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's that's the way to go. Okay, so Richard, what's your plans with the aircraft? When are we going to see them for sale? We actually start selling them uh, Monday. We start reserving. You start Monday? Yes, we've uh, been taking reservations for five days now. Fantastic. Okay. There you Here's go. my deposit. <laughs> okay, fantastic. It's proof. Which, uh, I just passed dollars right we, there. We just added, went from 11 to 12 aircraft sold this week. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, commuter craft, and you can be found where? At uh, N31. It's in the north lot, just north of the uh, buildings. And for the other 27,000 people that are listening We're all around the world, if Carter's. you do not get a chance to come to Sun and Fun in between the end of tomorrow, where can you be found? Cartersville, Georgia. No, and the website name is? Computercraft.com. We don't care com. where you live. Oh, come on. you got to come visit me. Uh, and on the web, we'll find out that address, but what's the name of your website? The website is uh, Computercraft.com. That's one word, C-O-M-M-U-T-E-R-C-R-A-F-T.com. Yes. Awesome. Perfect. Have you been reviewed in any magazines? Uh, well, we've had an AVWeb and an AOPA uh, web. Page. Yeah, nobody knows about course. AVWEB or AOPA, oh, so yeah, no, they'll, they'll never know. Count, right? Well, congratulations, really and great. it's really quite the effort. I'm really glad you came by. Thank you very, uh, much. Thank you very much. Thank Is you. there any last parting shots you want to share with us? Come uh, to the booth and take a look at a marvelous air vision of the future for aviation. Sweet. All right, uh, Richard, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to pull in another group. Uh, Puff, I want you to stick around. 
and girls stick around for a minute. Um, nice thing is I met guys from, come on over here, Massachusetts boys, get on in here. And dine on, don't go anywhere, you're next, give me five minutes. Okay, this microphone is for everybody, so as you feel like saying something obnoxious, just pass it on. Hey, <laughs> I, I, he's the expert at it. I'm oh, yeah, just, yeah. Blame it on somebody else. By the way, when you're going to talk, grab the microphone and put it right to your chin, okay? Otherwise, we can't hear you. Roger. By the way, these are the folks that I ran to. Some of you may remember the show that, oh, you left his money before. My deposit. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> anyway, um, I, uh, <laughs> I put up a tower for live ATC at my house for the Martha's Vineyard Airport. So if you listen to KMVY, it's through my house, which is awesome. And I'm sitting there with coffee listening to live ATC some Sunday morning. And, you know, we drip in the middle of winter, one or two planes. All of a sudden, a whole flock of planes came in, and the, and the controller really lit up, and it was hysterical. I grabbed my gear, and I went down and meet these guys. It turns out they're the Taunton Pilots Association. They actually do talk to each other. Or do you still talk to each other after that? Of course. No, oh, okay. Yeah, we're Taunton Pilot Association and, um, you know, from Taunton Airport and Cranland Airport, a mixture of both, uh, both groups melded together, and uh, we just started having fun. Oh, obviously a lot of fun. It was great talking with you back then. How many guys did you bring down? You're all... I think we had 13, 14, something like that. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. Did you take um, the, uh, the, uh, the commuter... Um, we, we took Southwest Airlines. Southwest. Time. Smart lads. We, 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 we need to get back to work on Monday. That's probably the only reason. But uh, <laughs> you know, we've, done, we've done the flight in small planes plenty of times. I, even if I wanted to fly down. We weren't going nowhere right. leaving uh, last well, I was week. plowing snow last uh, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. A yeah. couple of inches, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, how's it now? What's it like back home? Don't know. Haven't looked back. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't looked back. Neither have I. By the way, they're neighbors. They live right behind me. I'm on the vineyard. These guys are up in Taunton. And um, that's awesome. Anybody learn anything new here at the show so far? And if you got something to say, stick up your hand and he'll give you the mic. Yes. Grab that mic. What did you learn? That's Doc, but his closest friends call him the doctor. Hey, Doc, pick up the mic. Say hi. Come on, Doc. Tell us. Tell yeah, us he goes, nope, nope, I ain't going to talk. Pick up the mic. What did you see that's interesting? Yeah, what's, what's cool? Uh, I saw Skip Stewart. Who's that? Um, doing an air show. Yeah? What kind of air show? Aerobatics air show. Was it in a biplane or a straight wing? Biplane, pit and special. A, a pit special? What's so special about the pits? <laughs> Everything. And yeah. Dad, your dad has one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have plenty of time in a pit. Can you, uh, what kind of maneuvers what, do you do? What? I'm sorry. What? 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 I do rolls and loops and pits. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. How old are you? 13. Uh, is this? Are you for real? You're, nah, this, you're talking sim. <laughs> 13, yeah. You, oh, he, you've uh, done it in uh, the sim. He's yeah. the youngest of our group of boys. Uh, no the kidding. The top two are already... Uh, uh, licensed pilot and, and uh, next one soloed and flying wow. tail wheels and pits that's that's and awesome chipmunks and all kinds of stuff. Welcome to the game. It's wonderful. Really, be safe. IMC Club, IMC Club. We're going to do a VFR version for you guys too soon, so pay attention to that. Who's this young man next to you? Grab the mic. Say hi. I'm one of the other guys in the group, I guess. I'm Jake. <laughs> Just a dude in the group. Yeah. Um, I can tell you right now, my 13 year old friend, I'm 17, has probably 10 times the time I have in a plane, and he is phenomenal. He's very modest. But wow, that's, no, that's awesome. Hey, it's okay to be shy about it, but I want you to take the recognition of the accomplishment. You yeah. earn it. Absolutely. And stand up tall about it. It's okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Actually, you should be wicked proud because it's very rare. Awesome. Good for you. These ladies are going to tell you it ain't easy. Oh, yeah, man. I wish I could do loop-de-loops and acrobatics in a plane. That sounds amazing, but we don't really have the kind of plane. She, let well, I do acrobatics in. in my Cherokee. And all the luggage flips all over the plane. It's awful. It's awful. What? Go say hi. Who are you? What are you doing here? Hi, I'm Alex Dupont. Alex, uh, Facebook friend. Yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike Dupont's son. Oh, you still you, you admit to that, do you? <laughs> so, what do you fly? Uh, I soloed in a Cub in a Cessna 150 on my 16th birthday. Awesome! Yeah. Show me some love. <laughs> 16th birthday. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, really cool. Did you do it in the summer or in the winter? Uh, it's on October. In October, was warm enough to keep the doors down uh, in the Cub? Yeah, yeah. Did you hang your feet over the side? No, no. With a big cigar? <laughs> Alex's first solo on his 16th birthday, October 4th. It was blowing like crazy, and it wasn't down the runway. Really? I, I couldn't believe what he did. It was so it was a challenge? So you're good? You dance on the pedals okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Good for you. Yo, Blood, what's up? Hey, my name is Max Fratasso. Yeah, Max, good to see you, Facebook friend. Good to see you, too. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, he's the reason time. why all you guys are here, by the way. We just want to give him, per, yeah. you know, 
Give credit where credit is too. Yeah, that was great. What's uh, the hot What's the hot gig here this weekend? Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed Skip Stewart. That was that was pretty good. Um, yeah, we like Mike Gullian. Yeah, Mike Gullian's pretty good. Uh, Mikey. Mikey's a neighbor, by the way. Mike's over in Plymouth, and you guys are in Taunton, so, you know, what can yeah. we say? He's yeah, a local boy. Yeah, see him around. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we usually go over to his hangar and see if he's around, but we have not See any new plane you want to get? Um, I'm really liking that Sonics jet. That's pretty oh, you cool. like the Sonics jet? And yeah, yeah that, that German S-Box is pretty cool. Well, you guys out in Cranland got a Sonics on the table, right? Yeah, yep. The it ain't the jet, jet though. It. Yeah. It's not too late. You can always slap one on. Yeah, that's no, true. I don't right. know. <laughs> hey, listen, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate uh, you guys st stepping by. Stick around for a while. Ladies, I'm going to say goodbye to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So what are your plans? What's coming up? What's in the future for Lieutenant Colonel Veronica Killingsworth? Well, I'm going back to Oshkosh this summer. I'm going to try and get oh. some more time in a glider. Um, ah. I'm going to start working on ground school uh. and start getting some more time in the air. Uh. Yeah, just a little bit of everything and still trying to go to school and, you know, not spend all my money on flying. All right, remember this. The laziest person in the class is get their homework done first. You do it right the first time. You don't have to go back and bug with it anymore. Okay, shimmy some love. That away. And Cadet Cassie, Airman Cassie Killingsworth, what's uh, in the future for you? Nothing so far, sir, in the way of activities, but I do plan to get more hours in up in the air, and I'm planning to do continue with on that. Oh, now you give me a card after I've messed up your name a dozen times. Again, ladies, thank you very much. Why don't you just put thank the... Thank you uh, so much, sir. Oh, what are you referring to? Talk to me. What's going on? Oh, it's Oh, Mentor Magazine. Awesome. Good. Very good. Ladies, I'm going to kick you out. I'm going to get my man from Dynon in here. Put the microphone right down. And, uh, guys, you can stick around. And, you know, if you want to talk to this guy, I expect whoever feels got attitude. Michael Schoesfield here. How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. How are it's you? It's good How to see you again. And um, have you met Huff? Uh, Herc, rather. Herc Struff? Yep. yep. Hey, Mike. How are you? Not too nice bad. To good see to see you. you. I actually and, got a couple of questions for you, so that's good. Right. That's good. And uh, the do not go away, you guys, Taunton Pilots Association. So here, I would expect you guys to be in the conversation, any of you. So tell, we met in, um, in the uh, really very uh, well-done, comfortable uh, hangars this, this year. How is traffic for you? Traffic's really good. This is actually the first time I've been out of the booth all week. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and is this not like one of the most comfortable thing in the world? This is pretty nice today, yeah. Yeah, this is nice back here. Uh, okay, so on a soapbox, we're in an elevator. I want you to tell me about Dynon. you got about three minutes. Go. All right. So Dynon Avionics is the market leader in light sport and experimental avionics. We've been around for about 15 years. If you walk the flight line uh, of all the planes that have flown in, you're going to see a lot of Dynon equipment. Uh, we have products that span from an under $1,000 portable attitude indicator that you can bring from airplane to airplane, all the way up to our flagship Skyview system, which is basically everything you would need in an experimental or light sport airplane. And the big news that we're making this week is that we have our first STC uh, to allow uh, one of our products to uh, be put into type certificated aircraft. Um, which product is that? Because you're leading me right down the road that I wanted to talk about with the STC aircraft. You know, avionics are so expensive, and for the ability to have, even with, with us, as you know, we support the Stinson aircraft, how can we gain that STC into our Here aircraft? we go. Yep. The claws are coming out. Go. Exactly. So the product is the EFIS D-10A. That's actually one of the first products, uh, a, a quick successor to the very first product that we ever made. Uh, it's been, we've sold it since 2004. There are literally thousands of them flying in experimentals and light sports and other category aircraft around the world. The EAA was actually um, fundamentally one of the keys to getting this STC. They actually got the STC. So the EAA developed the STC uh, with the help uh, of you know, some of the most progressive folks within the FAA and us at Dynon. We at Dynon, we've been looking for a way to do this for many years without going down the traditional certified uh, path that is, uh, we think, unaffordable and Agreed. leads to products that are unaffordable for aircraft. So the initial STC covers uh, Cessna 150s, 152s, 172s, and then the Piper uh, PA-28 and 38 series aircraft. And that's just a start. Uh, the EAA will be adding to that list. They'll be adding products to that list, too. So when somebody comes by the booth and asks, oh, I want to put, you know, I love your little D-10A, which is an attitude indicator and your core flight instruments. What I really want is your Skyview system in my aircraft. You know, that's uh, basically the path that everybody wants to go in. So, Heading that way. Taunton Boys, any of you guys got any non-certificated aircraft in your fleet? Yeah, we have. Uh, in fact, 
if you remember the year they had the tornadoes here? 2011. Put the mic under your chin. Okay. Um, I picked up a Legend Cub that had your uh, Skyview in it, I think. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we flew it back home to Massachusetts. Um, wasn't a real pleasant flight. It was really bumpy all the way. But I, I got to tell you, I should have read the manual because I'm flying along and I'm, I'm supposed to be at 1,200 feet. And I'm thinking, man, I am good. It's so bumpy out. And I've been at 1,200 feet for the last half hour, and I realized there's a transponder code. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Read hey, the manual. Cool. We, we, yeah. we have all been there to one degree or another. And thanks for fessing up because those are the visceral reactions. When we all laugh like that, we remember. We take these thoughts up with us. So I really kudos to you for, you know, for you know, confessing to that one. Um, Herc. What's news with Stinson Club? Where are you going with this? The, uh, the International Stinson Club is doing some wonderful work. It, it, the best way to find us, actually, is on Facebook. We have a Facebook page itself. Really? And if you're out and about on Facebook, or yes. if you're out and about in the Stinson, or you want to know what's going on with the Stinson what's Club. What's going on with Stinson Club? Go there to Facebook. Facebook, and awesome. And search International Stinson Club in the Facebook search box. You'll find us, and you'll find guys out with their aircraft. We're talking sandbar landings. We're talking uh, all the stuff that the guys are doing with carbon cubs. A lot of the Stinsons are doing, too. You'll find yourself in wow. some really majestic areas, and people are taking pictures and posting where they're going, how they're doing. Of course, Sun and Fun's part of that. Uh, Oshkosh is part of that. And we get a gathering. We try to do a gathering at least every few years into Oshkosh. This last year, we had about 30-some-odd aircraft that went into Oshkosh, did a mass fly-in there. So there, there's always something going on with the aircraft. The aircraft are actually affordable for a four-seat aircraft. Uh, they're supported well, and they're affordable. So if you find yourself with a spare, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 nowadays, which is a penny in the bucket compared to a new aircraft, you can get yourself a four-seat Stinson that's extremely capable. Not terribly fast, but extremely capable. And when I get up in the air, I'm capable of doing 140, but I pair it down to 100. Why? I like to fly. Exactly. Go I'm somewhere. not going anywhere. Yeah. Hey, I we'll am. talk more about this offline. I will absolutely be in touch with you after the show. Really appreciate that. Right now, we got to take a little bit of an interstitial break. Tawn, boys, if you want to stick around, go ahead. If you want to take off, that's okay, too. Michael, I want you to stick around as well because I'm going to be introducing uh, Robert Mader from Anafi right after the break. Welcome to Plane Talk on WIMC Radio. The views and opinions expressed on Plane Talk are of the host, its guests, and callers. They do not necessarily reflect the views of the IMC Club or IMC Club International. Yeah, well, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Plan B, the second half of the uh, IMC Club uh, Delta here at uh, Saturday at Sun and Fun Radio on the back deck. And I'm joined by Steve Buss, old friend of mine. It's really good to see you again. Good to see you. I think it was three years or so, or maybe four, I don't know. Um, I, I was doing the morning show. Yeah. I and think. Uh, I met you underneath a, a B something. A P51. I P think it was two years ago. Oh, really? <laughs> well, <it's>, time <laughs> it flies like, when, when you're being tortured. Like yeah, yeah, right? Well, it's great to see you again. Yeah. And um, I want to talk to you because uh, the guy who uh, is now the airport, uh, the director of our airport commission, wanted to hire one of you guys to get Fifi out there. Mm -hmm. and I think he put a deposit on to get the plane down. Then we decided to take a step back. Instead, we're going to do not, a, not an air show. So um, we're looking uh, probably in two years, right. and we want to see with timing and scheduling and mm -hmm. get it all done. So you and I will be talking about that. Okay. I'd Good. like for you to stick around after the show for a minute so we might be able to get that rocket. <laughs> okay. What's new with you in the uh, commemorative force? Well, the, the big thing, we've got a couple of big things going, but the big thing is we moved to our new headquarters in Dallas. We're at uh, Dallas Executive Airport, which is about five miles south of downtown Dallas. Why'd you move? Why'd we move? Because we wanted to be someplace more centrally located. We were in Midland, Texas, which is a great place. Uh, great weather for flying, but uh, it's hard to get to if you're not fair from enough. Texas. Yeah, fair and, enough. If you, and being a guy from Wisconsin who moves to Texas, and I thought I knew all about that state until I drove across it once. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is, this is a big place. So, uh, so we're moving to Dallas. Uh, we're, we've got a, a hangar, and our offices are there now, and we're looking at uh, creating a 50 to $55 million aviation attraction. 
uh, not just a oh, museum, really? but uh, we're, we're calling it an attraction. Uh, so it's it's something that'll be a little. It won't be static like a museum, you know, a traditional aviation museum, which is a lot like an art museum. You know, you walk up, you look at the pretty airplane, and you read the sign. Uh, what we're looking at doing is leveraging the fact that the commemorative Air Force has 166 vintage aircraft in our fleet. About 90 percent of those fly. So our concept 90%. is everybody flies when you come to our our facility. Everybody will fly. Maybe it's in a full size aircraft. You know, maybe you go take a ride in a Stearman, uh, or maybe it's a simulator. Or maybe it's a paper airplane that uh, some youngsters can design and build. But we want we want everybody to experience flight at whatever level they want. So, okay. No, yeah. we're going to do a lot more talking because <laughs> in between the time I saw you last, not only am I taking over the IMC Club, but I'm with the Institute for Women of Aviation Worldwide. And we there did the pink paper, pink paper Airplane Challenge. Love and it. broke the Guinness World Record for that to get kids interested in aviation. Right. Oh, cool. I'm going to move right on over here to Robert Ma- Mater. It's good to see you again. You're another returning guest. Put hey, it there, hi. Bud. How are you doing? Really well. Uh, really very eclectic group of people right here. <laughs> Tell me what's going on with NAFI. Before I do that, I just want to say to Steve, I'm a proud contributor to the uh, Restoring the Dakota product project. Oh, yes. yep. that, is, that is just really exciting. Yeah. So we're really proud to got, be part of that and looking forward to seeing it flying again. Hopefully it will fly. Uh, it will be flying at Oshkosh. Okay. It, won't, it won't be restored at all, but we're getting it back to airworthy standards, okay. and uh, then we'll ferry it down to Dallas and start doing the real hard work. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm Bob Mater. I'm chairman of the National Association of Flight Instructors. We're a professional organization of flight instructors. Our mission in life is to raise the bar in instruction. It's instructors for instructors, and we believe that if we make instructors better, we're going to make aviation better, which attracts more people to aviation, which makes aviation better, and it just keeps going on from there. This is an interesting group because we have technology for people that are getting into uncertificated aircraft who are being able to get involved at a, at a less financially or um, somewhat easier. And, and uh, Michael, it, you're, you're nodding with affirmation. I'm actually tripping over my words because as I'm saying it, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, you got 170,000. That's not so easy. For, but then you have other aircraft which are very inexpensive. Yeah, that I mean, use your stuff. Yeah, I think the reason that people are building aircraft more, and more, I mean, there are there are more home-built aircraft manufactured in, every year than there are, you know, piston singles, and that's because of the, the the cost difference. When a lot of your new, you know, mi- middle of the road aircraft are in the good fraction of a million dollars, but you can build something for between, you know, thirty and a hundred thousand dollars. That's a real big incentive. In fact, the the builder population, you know, we've seen, and I think that most of the kit manufacturers would agree, has actually really shifted over the last decade or so. You know, uh, home building started as people that were sort of, you know, really hardcore, you know, craftsmen and experimenters. Um, people want to get into flying. They don't have the money to uh, purchase uh, a new aircraft. The legacy fleet is where you learn, but they're not terribly exciting. But if you look at things like, you know, RVs. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, are you talking, what are you talking about? Do you know who you're sitting next to? <laughs> yes. Legacy, not, not I'm exciting. Also not Steve my words is here. very well. And, 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 th- and those aren't the aircraft I was talking about. I'm talking about just the, you know, there are a lot of 150s and 152s and 172s yeah. out there, and we've all flown them. But then when we say, hey, uh, I want an aircraft, you start thinking, do I want to fly an airplane that's older than me? You know, <laughs> and, and I backed until, I, until uh, we built a, a bunch of us at Dyna built a sportsman together. But until then, I'd never flown an aircraft that was younger than me. Which I, I'm flying an airplane that is my age. <laughs> Actually, it's 10 years younger than me. But, uh, yeah, very, well, very good point. Yeah. Um, let me just talk about some of the really uh, cool stuff that you, you you came out with a product now that is applicable uh, for certificate aircraft. Please tell us about it. Yeah, so that's um, our EFIS D10A. It's actually the the first product we released uh, back in 2004. We've been selling it to experimental and light sport aircraft uh, since then, over a decade. It's in thousands of aircraft uh, worldwide. Uh, The EAA and the FAA uh, got together with us and said, you know, we think there's a way that we can bring this technology, which has basically been proven, um, to type certificated aircraft um, in a way that's different than the conventional certification process. And so um, they led that charge, and we were happy to be involved. It was a you know, pretty short program. In fact, uh, the EAA got the STC in hand on, I think it was Monday. We had all of our banners and brochures printed, but we weren't sure if we were going to get there. The shake of the hand. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. That's a, that's a big deal. Um, in, in these um, legacy aircraft, Steve. <laughs> 
<laughs> the the real things. They're, they're even more legacy than the ones that. that no, he's the thing that cracks me up on the flight line, looking at a couple of warbirds yesterday, I was talking to somebody, and I was going, "You got to remember, these things weren't made to go more than like twenty sorties, right? Right. Yeah. They, they were thrown together. Well, and Boeing did an insanely good job. Right. And when you do take care of some of these airframes, they're just going to keep going. Right. Although they do need TLC. Oh, yeah. Um. Do you ever see anybody throwing any wicked new flat screens in these? Uh, <laughs> Well, Are you going to confess you, or just shake your head no and lie yeah, to me? Yeah, I could do either. Uh, no, if you uh, <laughs> if you looked at Fifi, our, our B-29, so B-29 Super Fortress, built in 19, this particular model, built in 1945, too late for the war, you know, came off in, in uh, I think it was July of 45. So that's We don't hold it against her. That's right. So it's, uh, you know, that's old technology. But when she flies cross country, if you, if you ever get up in the cockpit and you look, there's two iPad holders on for the pilot and first <laughs> officer, and they do all their navigation. That's for Netflix. That That's, we, yeah, know, we, for Netflix. we know. It. Yeah, yeah. So we do uh, incorporate some of that, but, uh, you know, our goal is to is keep them as, as um, original as possible. Obviously, there's some concessions to uh, modern technology and air traffic control, things like that. Uh, we're not using the, you know, the old crystal radios. We've got uh, a little more modern than that. Uh, the but, null, uh, looking, searching for the null? Yes. You know? Yep. Uh, you remember but, that? Oh, it's just, Robert's going, oh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I read about it, barely. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, our, our airplanes, too, we, we only fly them in VFR conditions and during the day. So you know, Let me talk about the great, qualifications great of your guys. You sure. Um, you know, what do you need to fly to, you know, do you need to be an old guy to fly an old aircraft? And, and no, of course not, I'm joking. As far as NAFI is concerned, one of the things that really bothers the hell out of me is that there's this um, uh, unbelievable curve of uh, accident rate. It's high at the beginning, low for the first I don't know how many hours, and then as you get experience, the you know the risk rate goes back up. What are you doing to fight that? Because we need these guys to get into these things, and I can't lose any more of them. We can't lose any more of those their, those aircraft. They're irreplaceable, and more importantly, the, the people, people are, are irreplaceable. irreplaceable. These are, as Matt Sicaro at HAI says, these are statistics are really mothers, brothers, sisters, their family, they're people we know and love, and we want to make sure that people are safe. Um, probably the best book I've read about it is The Killing Zone, by, I, and I cannot recall the, do, the professor's name, um, but it, it talks about this. And what we need to do is train pilots from the beginning to fly professionally. They don't have to be professional pilots, but they have to fly professionally. John King says it, says it best. Would you do it with 450 people behind you? Then don't do it with just yourself. Well... Um. Um, I have to back you up a thousand percent. Um, my day job as a clinical psychotherapist, I run drug programs, work at the ER of a hospital a couple of days a week, crisis counselor, uh, dealing with substances, dealing with people who put themselves in a difficult position and they get on the road. And we all get upset about when we hear of a drunk driver doing something. But now in aviation, the 500-pound gorilla are the pilots that get up in the front, shut the door, and we off they go. So there's issues there. Um, we're talking about this global awareness of proficiency and safety. There's a shift in the wind. There's people, now we can't hide behind it anymore. You know, we're starting with the alcohol awareness and things like that, now with the opiate problem, and now we're starting to pay more attention to that. And maybe I'm going in a direction we shouldn't go today because I would really like to have experts who are here to address that. But we are all nodding in affirmation that these things are real. We need to keep people alive. We need to keep them profession proficient and sharp. So I just want to shout out to everybody that throttle, bottle to throttle stuff. Yeah, I get that. But if you're twisted out like an old rag 12 hours later after a binge, I don't want you behind that door. Absolutely not. So I'm just letting people know. Um, boy, did I buzz kill that one. <laughs> And the bandwidth here, I got web page not available, so I was trying to look up your bud there, but yeah. uh, no good. Um, I love the idea of what, you know, Kermit's doing, uh, revitalizing fantasy right. of flight. Yep. And um, we all know that uh, Kermit, probably, uh, if not one of the very most passionate guys about aviation on the planet, I mean, you can, die, you can cut him up uh, like an amoebas, and each one would grow into a Kermit Weeks. <laughs> I mean, there's just, he's so yes. fanatical about it. You got a Kermit Weeks part of you. Yeah. You just in this insane passion. How did you ever start to get involved in flying aviation? Let's see. Well, if you turn the clock back about 50 years, <laughs> eh, maybe not quite that, <laughs> but uh, uh, I was Wayne's uh, World. Wayne's uh, growing up in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, a little, little town on, on Lake Michigan, uh, going to a Catholic grade school. And uh, I, I can't remember the, uh, the, the sister's name, but uh, one of the Catholic nuns 
decided to show our, our class, and I think it was in fourth or fifth grade, the movie Battle Him. If you remember that from the 1950s. It's a movie about a, uh, a P-51 pilot, right, who ends up dropping uh, a load of ordnance uh, on, supposedly on a target, but he hits an orphanage, right? And he, he kills a lot of civilians, and he feels very guilty about this and ends up going back in and getting the, the kids and, and oh, getting wow. them homes and you know, wow. kind of trying to take, make it right, right? So that's, the, that's the, the, the message that was in the movie. What I took away from it was, wow, that P-51 Mustang is one <laughs> cool airplane. <laughs> So, so instead of you know instead of doing assignments in class, I, I like making. At least drawings. you were a healthy kid. Yeah, fifty yeah, one Mustang. That's all you saw. Yeah. So uh, you know, and so that that not, not kind of Robert got Mitchum. Uh, no, no, I. Um, Doesn't yeah, matter. We'll get back it'll, to it. It'll come to me. Uh, but anyway, it, so that that went on, and we lived at the time about a mile short of uh, the Manitowoc County Airport. It was very tiny. And Republic Airlines used to fly DC fours a mile so they, away. Yeah, right, right over the house. So I, you biked over. Exactly, exactly. I biked down to the Asbury Park yep. grass strip three miles down the yeah. road, and I used to lie on the runway yeah, when you could. Yeah. Oh, we didn't know, and they, they, you know, yep. three quarters right of the way down the grass runway, they'd go over me like ten, fifteen feet all the time. Yep. And, and the the the, the, hang, the banner towers. These guys were like, you know, drinking yeah. sodas and stuff. They'd fly and they'd throw their cans at us <laughs> out of the plane. You know, the doors are open. Yep. They're going to throw the hook on their way down to pick up the banner. Yep. But they'd throw their empty cans of soda at us, ah. which was hysterical. But that's awesome. So when did you get your ticket? Uh, it took a long time. I, I followed the, the same pattern that a lot of people do. You get interested mm. early mm. in your teenage years. And if wow. you don't do it then, you know, life gets in the way. You, uh, you go to college. You, yeah. you buy a car. You get a house. You get a family. And and and, and, and pretty soon in all of a sudden I'm 40, I'm going, I have not pursued that dream yet. So I did. Uh, and luckily enough, I found a flight school where you could learn in a J3 Cub off grass. So that's my, my solo story. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I also started late in love. Give me some yeah, love. Right. Yeah. And when did you start flying, Michael? I was in my 20s. A similar story. Oh, we don't want to talk about you. <laughs> 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 S- similar story though. I mean, I-, I grew up with not like no money at all. Uh, went up for with one flight. Uh, one of my and buddies, he still has but, no uh, money at yeah. all. <laughs> one of my buddies was getting his license in high school. He actually ended up he's like now one of the youngest United like he had super high seniority because he was down that path. I was in the back of the aircraft while he was on one of his training flights. I was like, oh, this is really cool, and then proceeded to forget about flying. I, mean, I was always oh, oh, into aviation and space, but just forgot about it for until I got out of college. Got out of college, moved, moved out to Seattle, uh, worked for Microsoft, quit that. That wasn't my thing. And I said, what do I really like in the world? I'm like, oh, yeah, aviation. And I'm older. And maybe if, you know, I could afford this somehow now. Found Dynon, went to work for them. And then that was kind of my path back into really? aviation. Yeah. Cool. And now you rule the world. Yeah, now we're doing okay. <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. And what's your excuse, Robert? I have no excuses. But uh, <laughs> I glue up near, uh, glue, glue up. You glue up. Glue up, up good, yeah. but I did a lot of gluing of model airplanes, but I grew up um, grew up near Glenview Naval Air Station uh, when it still existed, and uh, used to like watching uh, the Navy uh, do their thing. And at the age of 38, a similar story to Steve's. You know, like whoa, whoa, you skipped over for the whole Navy did their thing? Yeah, I didn't. Oh, oh well, Glenview Naval Air Station got to watch everything from Herky Birds to the Blue Angels visit to who knows what all. F-4 Phantoms in the reserves, in and wow. out. And I used to watch them. And then um, uh, at the age of 30, well, one other thing is there was the trip to my very first airline flight was on a Lufthansa 707 stretch uh, to Frankfurt and I out of O'Hare. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. And then flash forward to the age of 38, I looked up and said, I've always wanted to learn how to fly. Why am I not doing it? And I joined a really good flying club uh, in the Chicago area. And next thing I knew, a multi-engine flight instructor. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> well, uh, Michael, I don't know if you're young enough for this, but I'm going to ask Steve and, uh, and Bob, um, did you guys go up front in flight on a commercial when you were younger? You yeah. did? Mike, you did? I have a pretty cool story. You're so. the one I was excluded <laughs> because of your age. Because now they won't let you. I think I was like maybe I used to fight my way in all the time as a kid. Go ahead, Michael, tell me. So uh, I was born in England, uh, lived there till age. I could tell by the yeah, accent. You could hear it in the accent, right? Uh, lived there till uh, age five. 
we moved to America. My father passed away, so we moved to America. Where my, my mother's American on my sixth birthday. So on the British Airways 747, somehow a cake shows up. I just think they'd have cakes on board for you know kids that are having birthdays. There's one of them, right? And then of course I got to go up to the the flight deck, and I and I remember you know this is kind of this weird vague memory. I remember I got to turn something, which I think might have been like the tiller for the for the landing gear but you know like a wheel like a like a boat wheel very that's they the, had you putting the gear down <laughs> i'm not sure what they had me doing <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> sure put, so, leave it so, to so the so kid maybe that, so maybe that was my first flight <laughs> 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 hey okay wait, wait before okay i'm gonna tell you oh well let me just jump to this i used to fight my way into the cab and and um my parents did vacations once or twice every two or three years, and, and uh, they really got a kick out of the fact that that's where I wanted to be. Um, I want to ask the three of you this. Uh, it's a beautiful Mooney. It's really in great shape. It's three guys, all CFIs, and they're coming in, and they touch down and retract the gear and finish the rest of the landing on the belly. What happened? Steve, you want to go or I have a, I have an opinion. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, we all got opinions. <laughs> yeah. Somebody called for flaps up? Maybe. That would have been my first, I, know, my first I don't guess. know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what's up? What's who's thinking of plan B? What was it would be another realistic option? Not saying right oh. or wrong. Oh, somebody maybe uh, thought they were going around. That could be. Or somebody forgot who was pilot in command and was trying to help. The gear was already down, and they flipped the lever. There you go. You've got three in control. No, you don't. <laughs> you got left seat, PIC. You've got somebody superior to him in the right seat, and then you got the best guy in the back, and they're all chatting the blue streak on the way down. Well, on some aircraft, that little lever there for the flaps and that little lever there for the gears... And you and I are chatting, and we're talking. Up, da, 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 yeah, we're going for dinner. Oh yeah, we're going to get this. Oh yeah, you should try this place. Ah crap. Yep. Crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch. And the whole IMC thing, you know. Let that be the worst. Let that be the worst the guy ever does. You know, it's embarrassment. A long patch of embarrassment. Very long patch, and but let that be the worst of it, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, so you know. Shameless plug for IMC. Shameless plug for, um, you can tell I'm ADD. Uh, I want to go back to, I actually started talking about Kermit, right? And then I, we got distracted. The fantasy of flight thing, you guys creating a, a destination. Um, who came up with the idea and why do you want to be so tortured? <laughs> Tortured? Well, yeah, um, because... Dealing with the public. You know, they're a pain in the ass. I know. I know. But you know what? They're our future. And uh, it, we really wanted to do something different. I mean, there's already several aviation museums in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And, uh, you know, we just didn't want to be the same as everybody else. And we knew that moving to Dallas, we needed to make a statement uh, and kind of set the bar high. Uh, there's n we, we, we set the bar high. We can always come down if we need to. If the fundraising doesn't make it, if the technology doesn't doesn't match what we want to do, if it's not right, we can always step down, but we'll never be able to go up. So what we want to do is set the set the goal as high as we can and see what we can do. Shoot for the moon, and, hey, maybe we'll just get across the Atlantic instead. But we're shooting high right now. Oh, that, that's awesome. And um, when do you think you guys are going to open up this shindig? Probably 2020. Okay. Yeah. Well, fair enough. So in the meantime, years. you still have the fleet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got, I mean, the... What do you got in the fleet? Tell everybody what you got. 166 airplanes. How much time do we have? Dude. <laughs> so We're going to have to do a second hour. So, basically, the, the queen of the fleet is uh, Fifi, the B-29, uh, Super Fortress. She's been flying around since the uh, since 74. By the way, shout out to my buddy Eddie Hayes, who was the best man at my wedding. There you go. Who also flew Fifi years ago. Yeah. But, yeah. um... Okay. So we've got, we've got... Eddie! Uh, I'll see the, you this summer. B-24 Diamond Lil. She's uh, She'll turn 75 next month. She's built in 1941. She's the oldest B-24 still in existence. The, old, the oldest one still is flying. Is she here? She's she not is here. not. She is actually in the hangar in Dallas. Um, leading edges are off. They're getting her hair the, done. Yeah, she's nice. getting her hair done. We've got two B-17s, uh, six B-25s, a handful of Mustangs, a bunch of T-6s. Any of these things actually flying? All these airplanes actually fly. So 
Yeah, ninety percent of the fleet is airworthy, and we've got everything from from L birds all the way up to the twenty nine. The Good wonderful of mine flies uh, flies uh, show me out of Missouri, yep. out, of, yep. out of Smart Field. Craig yep. O'Mara. Yep, he's been after me to get a type rating in it. <laughs> What's you your problem? Why I would I'd jump at that? Um, time mostly, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, I, I God, I hope so. I wish for you it does. The fact that you were just rolling these things off your lips as if it's just whatever. Mm -hmm. It's another day. The monumental effort that it takes to keep one of these things going. You know, we read in the magazines about the guys who are buffing and polishing and, and bucking rivets and putting stuff back together. And you've got, you have how many? We've got uh, 12,000 members. And really, uh, you're just like EIA and AOPA and, and all the other aviation organizations, there's a small group of folks who get paid, and the rest is all volunteers. I mean, there's, we have a staff of less than 20 uh, at headquarters. There's no way we can keep those airplanes flying. Are they so experimental? Uh, some are. Some are, some are not. Some are standard category. After the so war, they can use Dynon products? Huh? Probably, yeah. We joke about having like a sepia or a black and white mode to try to... Uh, there we go. I like that. <laughs> to, to I like try that. to hey, guys. hey, you might be on to something. I think, we're, I think a we are. A couple of one-offs. Oh, we that would be too... portable D2 attitude indicator as well. You can do that. You can do that. You know you can do that. There you go. <laughs> Just software. Very yeah. Cool. No, my son's a program. Oh, <laughs> hire my son. Hey, Sam, it's a shout out. He, he works for BAE Systems. Trust me, he's got more time, more things to do. But that's funny as heck. Um, and uh, we got about uh, five minutes left, a little bit more. Um, so tell me, Robert, I want to know what's going on with NAFI and your efforts. Anything new and exciting? You, can, you don't have to pay me now, Steve. <laughs> just... Um. Well, as usual, we, we have the magazine. We're very proud of the uh, current issue. As a matter of fact, since we've been since Dynon is here, I'm going to give a shout out. With our cover article is teaching an experimental aircraft. Take a breath here. I want to say goodbye, goodbye to my friend Steve Buss. Thank you very very much. I will be talking to yes. you about um, the event in the days to come. Good. Safe travels. Good, good to meet you. Uh, Take care. Awesome. Great to see you again. You. You're welcome. Yes, as you were saying, Bob. So. It's this mu the current magazine is about teaching an experimental aircraft. A shout out to our friends at Dynan, uh, written by uh, uh, Bill David. It's a great article. Uh, so we have the magazine going. Uh, the website, of course, www.nafinet.org. Uh, new and exciting. We're constantly trying to reach out to uh, to our members, to the aviation community. There are a couple of things in the work. There are a couple of things in the works that I'm not ready to talk about, but coming very, very soon to an internet near you. Well, that, that's good news, and I, I look forward to. Uh, I'll actually be able to have a reason to be in touch with you. The development of the uh, VFR version of the IMC of course. course, I should have mentioned that. And the, uh, the proficiency program, the proficiency center. Uh, we're really excited about that. We're a proud participant in that up at Oshkosh. And please, if you're coming to Oshkosh, come to the Proficiency Center. It's a great way to tune up your skills with a bunch of dedicated CFIs who give a lot of their time to that. You can sit down at a Redbird. Absolutely. And you can fly an approach. You can log that time. You got your guys there. That's right. So do you sign up in advance for that? Um, yeah, you have to. You have to, to manage yeah. it, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like two days in advance. It's no, the, when you get the there. day of. Yeah, when yeah. you get there, yeah. And that's <laughs> – we have taken this thing for real. We've really – made this a legitimate effort um i think uh in the last couple of years there was uh eight or ten uh, redbirds out there i mean yeah. redbirds been very very good with that yeah they've and, been wonderful um, to us and so you know uh the ability to actually get seat time and to uh get some assistance some ed education while you're out there, there you go. enjoying the airplanes um so talk to me about what's either new exciting with dynon well, I think, uh, Michael Schofield. speaking of education, I mean, it's really important to us as well. We've actually, at this show, our other product announcement is a simplified version of that flagship system, which can do everything. We call it Skyview SE. It has a super simplified interface uh, that basically has no menus, you know, just a single row of um, buttons for you know, adjusting the, 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 the key things that you need to do. 
one of the things we've added to our products in the last couple of years for people that are transitioning to this high technology or the, the latest technology is our six pack mode. So if you've flown, been flying for decades. There it is. And Steam gauge is on a flat screen. Exactly. And we do some things to, you know, because a lot of people, once they get comfortable, will then say, hey, what's that other display, the modern, the EFIS display? with the That's pics? like what adding that a like? shot to near beer, ain't it? Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. So what we do is we put the numbers in there as well. So you've got the needles, you know, that you're used to reading, and then the numbers in the middle. Here, let's, let's talk about this. Uh, we were actually talking about the other day. There's a very big difference between analog reception and digital interpretation. Yeah. With analog, you see, digits, uh, you see these bars, the arms, where they should be, and it becomes exception analysis. Um, you operate by exception analysis. So as you scan, if something oh, shouldn't be there, you know where it should be. But on bars, on flat screen, it's entirely different. Numbers are numbers going up and down. You have the number, which gives you the precision, so that, you know, uh, on altitude and airspeed. But you still have the, the analog version of that, uh, the, the, the colored tapes the do strip, slide yeah, underneath. The tape. So you're looking in one spot versus looking where the needle position is. So it is different psychologically, for sure. But once you transition to that modern display, it actually is, is pretty intuitive. And everybody says, yes, it it is intuitive. It does help because your scan is now limited to a brief area. Yeah. And we also recognize that you know these devices do require training. They are new for people. You know, a lot of people that have been flying have a lot of habits and uh, you know decades of learning built in. We have hours and hours of online training videos. You can uh, they are basically a recorded version of classes that we do in person that oh. people can do without the benefit of having the display in front of them, but uh, you know, we take things step by step, so we basically have a course that you can teach yourself how to fly behind our products. Brilliant, and where can we find Dynon on the web? Yep, it's on the Dynon channel, which you can find at dynonavionics.com. That, that's wonderful, and with reference to flight education, having any of these videos training available has got to be an asset. It's, it's a great asset. Does, uh, can we go to the NAFI website to find them? Uh, some of our partners have products like that, the uh, King Schools, uh, Sporties. All of the schools have these types of products. We have, link, we have links to them, and it's all out there for our, for our members to, uh, to use and pass on to their students. Wonderful. Well, uh, that brings us uh, about one minute before we're going to shut down. But I really can't thank you enough, Michael. Um, truly appreciate the time that it took for you to come out here uh, outside of the booth. Um, go back, enjoy the show, and um, uh, again, I was really impressed with the time you took for me, um, and that, that segment will air separately from this, so you get double-dipped, which is awesome, and your products are, are wonderful. Everybody knows them. Becoming a very familiar name, I wish you continued success on all your endeavors, and uh, see you out at Oshkosh. Yep, we'll be there. Well, we're going to do another show. It's going to be a little more formal out of the EAA recording studio, but I'll be sure to be get in touch with you. We'll be talking before then, and if for whatever reason we don't, please do me a favor, give me a ring, and I'll make sure you get a card before you go. Uh, Bob, Bob Meter, again. Thank you much. Uh, I, ca I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything you do uh, for flight education. Your organization of standardizing or at least getting a respectable level of trust from these instructors so that we're not ripping anybody off or minimizing or otherwise leaving something on the table when it comes to flight instruction. I truly appreciate it for somebody who's had five to get my private. Well, thank you so much. That's a wonderful compliment. I really, really, on behalf of the members, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, I didn't mean it. So I take that all back. <laughs> and with that being said, I want to thank you all for listening. And um, this will be the final episode live. I'm doing a recording episode in just a minute for Sun and Fun 2016 from the back deck to Sun and Fun Radio. This is Howie from IMC Radio. Folks, we will see you live at Oshkosh in the summer. So, for the rest of the Golden Microphones of the IMC Club, I wish you all well. Keep the sun in your face and the wind on your ass. Next time, we're going to have to land. 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 We're going to have to land.